I was actually thinking about Dave Denniston um, when Dave O got in an accident and uh, yeah. you know, the sledding accident changed his life, right? And um, you know, now he's changed the attitude. And but I mean, I think like a lot of people that go through that initial accident or um, have a disability as a result of that. Mm -hmm you know, go through this process of self-loathing and, um, you know, questioning their self-worth and, you know, what they're going to do with their life. And then they have to reinvent themselves. And I think, you know, we've seen that with, with, um, with him and Amy Van Dyken and, you know, and they're in such glaring examples of that, but, um, I don't know, Tom, I mean, I wanted to ask you about your experience, you know, kind of in the, in the depths and and you mentioned some examples of how you've started to build a lifestyle around and the, and the right tools in your tool belt to shape your thinking in a positive way. Um, what are some other things that have really helped you grow since that time? A uh, specialist is probably the number one thing that I recommend. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of not too much because um, I'm not, you know, the largest media social media accounts on the planet, but a lot of times like kids will reach out and, you know, after I get, I try to make sure I get an okay from other parents or like I'll put it in a story to the new rules of use or something, which I fully support. Um, or if they're an adult, which is you know easier. Um, I just like, you know, you have to work with specialists. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to jump into, um, you know, a long half-life pill, which can be a, a little bit more of an imbalance, especially right away. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not, you know, anyone, I, I didn't go that route because of my own fears. And I, you know, I always open up with that up front, but, um, you know, I, I went, uh, behavioral, um, you know, I, there was a guy we did like premarital MFT stuff with, mm -hmm. and I went to him and he, you know, focused also on, um, cognitive behavioral therapy and, uh, EMDR and like the cutting edge of that kind of stuff actually, which was random and a blessing. So um, a lot of that kind of stuff. And the cool thing about CBT for me is it's very athletic. It's very object oriented. It's very um, like exercise based. And so the results aren't based on like talking about your feelings, even though that's what you're doing. Um, and so it's really just like learning a new mechanic in the weight room. And that is how he like explained it to me. And, um, <clears throat> and I was all like, this is stupid, blah, blah, blah. Um, until the, you know, things kind of came to a head and I was tying a rope around my neck at my house. And it's like, okay, well now, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm, I see this wave of super high highs, super low lows ever since I was 11. And so probably even earlier. And so it's like, I got to try this stupid stuff. And um, my therapist that I began working with that week was really smart about it. He, we had known each other. He had known of my like presumptions and, they're not unique. A lot of young American people have those presumptions about mental health care, just because I think there are a lot of quacks out there, if that's okay to say. Um, but there's a noise. I don't know if you're going to hear it because it's a little bit later in the afternoon, but there's like a beep beep. Um, we have one of the blind crosswalks like right outside my yeah. apartment and there's a blind dude who uses it every day. So, um, so I think it's great, obviously, but it's just a noise the living hell out of me. And so there's, there's this like exercise that he does where I like move my hands like this, like every second and a half. And I think of like a positive experience, whether that be like a party or a day with my wife or spearfishing, like it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, anywhere where I felt like catharsis yeah. and I just stay in that zone and the physical movement, it kind of imitates the EMDR part or the eye movement, rapid movement part of uh, the PTS treatment, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, then you just kind of like think of that negative stimulus and what he calls, he always like to do this. So like pretend this is a flash drive and we're not going to open it, but we know there's a document in it and we know that it's titled blah, 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 or like the beeping or like whatever that negative stimulus is. And you do the exercise and you do it like five times a day. You do it once a day. You do it like whatever he would say in the beginning. And, um, but he did it with something so like blatant and so not connected to my trauma. And it's like, I was able to notice those noises like bug me way less so I come back like, well, honestly, I come back like the next day because we were doing like five sessions in a row that week um, because we're lucky and we had savings. And um, I was like, this is, it. this is the shit. Like, I'm in. Like, show me. Like, <laughs> and like, let's do this. And um, so he was like kind of like giving me those, you know, it's not overloading me at once. But, you know, he had good leadership there. And so I'm really thankful for that relationship and the way that he went about it and, and knowing his patient. And um, then he was able to apply it to like parenting and 
relationships and things that have gone wrong in the past and like me realizing that like the way that I treated myself was a result of like something that worked in the past that just isn't working now. And I'm acting like a three-year-old and I'm 27. And um, again, this isn't unique. Like, and that's what I like about it. It's like, this is, I want this to be like, and this is what I, you know, what we said up front is like, I, you know, I, if this is like something that's so diagnos diagnosable and so obvious, then the fix should be the same. And so I just wanted to like, give me the stuff that's worked for 50 years. <laughs> and uh, we did that. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm really uh, blessed in that it worked, you know, and, and uh, again, like, I don't think there's a stigma around antidepressants. And I hope that um, I don't add to that. I, I don't think there should be. I know that there is a stigma around antidepressants and pills and stuff. I just didn't think that, you know, we were going to get that squared away within the chaos of like my insomnia, my inability to sleep, my inability to like be alone. And it's just like, you know, we let's not add like another variable to that. Let's just see if we can deal with what we can. And then it just works so well. We just decided not to pursue that. Tom, did you guys talk about how swimming influenced that? Um, uh, in previous, oh, yeah, previous podcast, we talked about we are trained millions <laughs> of times to mm. just to put pain aside, to put mm. like the challenge aside and overcome challenges and that's pain put aside. But so you're blocking pain, you're blocking hardships in life, mm. but that's the same place you block pleasure and happiness mm. and a good place. Yeah. And I think that like, I think there's a lot of athletes out there talking about that side of stuff and like, Oh, like, you know, they, they say like us as in like Olympians and um, they put us in this box or like this post Olympic hangover or like the depression. I think that like, yeah, like going to the Olympics and not doing as well as I wanted to the frustration in my career and the lack of money added to that. But other than that, like they were all very human emotions and stuff that I think I would have gone through with or without swimming. And I always prefer to keep it there because yeah, I mean, like over half the Olympic team is probably depressed at some point. And like that is a really high skewed number. But I don't think that like top two of trials is where that ends. <laughs> like I think that if you opened up that population, you know, the numbers probably get worse, not better. And so I think that like putting us on that pedestal or talking about it that way is like a pro or whatever or a professional. I mean, um, I don't know. I just think it's kind of needless line in the sand. And um, and this is what I explained to you as a swimming and I'm very thankful for their involvement. And um, they kind of took like a Andrew Yang approach recently and said, you pick your therapist, you schedule it, just tell us about it, you know, receipts, don't just, we're not just going to give you money, but then we're just going to give you money and pay for the therapy. It's not going to go through the insurance. It's not going to go. And they really took a step forward and um, made that a huge priority. And, you know, athletes like myself who've taken a part of it are very thankful for that because like, you know, um, Sean McCann, who's our sports psychologist from, um, the USOC, like we're in his group and Ken Revisa, who up until his um, relatively recent passing, um, rest in peace, uh, we know I was able to work with him and a couple of different sports sites down in San Diego. And it's just like, look, like I'm not having the yips where like it's a mantra issue or it's like a routine issue. Like I kind of had that down. Like I'm an Olympian in two events now. Like I'm having like, I don't want to be alive anymore issues. So this is more real life for me and that's how i felt like i want someone in the room where i live every week um and that's kind of the part you swimming listen to Good. more than this next part which is fine like whatever they heard is great but also it's like i want someone who specializes in that you know what i mean and i think that like you know like uh i think in you know we do we make this mistake a lot with um like kairos or i know dr john i'm assuming you're pt yep, yep. and it's like you know i think they're like oh like well you know i could do that too and I'm not saying that you're, you know, you do that, but I just see a lot of people in different fields make, you know, say that. And it's like, no, no, no. Like if I have like a distance question, I'm going to go to a distance coach. You know what I mean? If I have a sprint question, I'm going to go to a sprint coach. Like if I have a not want to be alive problem, I'm going to go to the not want to be alive psychiatrist or psychologist. And so that was my main argument. And um, we're, I'm very thankful. It wasn't just me. Um, the ones who are, are, you know, out and talking about it, like Jack Levant, Alison Schmidt, um, Phelps, and, a couple others who have like made a huge push with user swimming. And so we're very thankful that, um, you know, we work under the best, not for uh, the best NGB out there. So we're very thankful for them.